So Black Clover decided it was going to make everyone just start bursting out in tears. Chapter 286, the backstory of Noct, the true past, what happened, his twin brother Morgan, his connections to Yami, and everything that transpired leading up to where we're at right now, his personality, all of it just makes sense, even down to the cigarette smokes that Yami, from episode one of the series, we see Yami smoking, the, the backstory on top of that, like so much to gather from this chapter, and at the same time, it was just heart-wrenching, it was really, really freaking sad, honestly. We've only been with this character, even though he's been a part of the Black Bulls in secret throughout the entirety of the story we've only been with knocked for about like 30 chapters or so right it's not that long at all and yet at this point we feel like we've been attached to the character enough and this was done so well to the point of making you emotional making you feel sad making you feel like am no morgan <laughs> yes people a lot to talk about so without further ado let's talk a little bit of that black clover great r.i.p morgan shit is crazy Let's do it. For no matter how you feel, get it done. 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 So the entirety of Black Clover Chapter 286 up until like the last page or two was basically all focused in and centered in on the past of Noct and what led him to where he's at right now. We needed to understand things with Morgan and honestly it makes me a little bit worried like yo is not going to die within the next couple chapters. Maybe this fight against the devils of the highest order is going to lead to his demise and that's why Tabata is like yo let me tell you everything about this character and why he is who he is before I off him. I'm really wondering if that's going to be the case because it seems to be like that's potentially what's going to happen with everything. This shit was just oh my god. Because it starts off of how he knew Yami from when they were younger. He met him when they were were like an adolescent so to speak and they were kind of getting into trouble and things like that the original knock because now this chapter clarifies that knocked was indeed the white haired guy and his brother was morgan the black haired guy but knock him and yami would do dastardly things together and they also got along very well because they had similar magic and it was just really dope to see the two of them because they were very similar like yami didn't give a shit he was a foreigner didn't care and then we have knocked on the other hand that comes from this really dark family that i had no idea like yo it kind of reminded me to a certain degree throughout the chapter with Nox's family of like Gordon's family. Eventually at some given point Yami went to join the Magic Knights alongside his brother Morgan, Nox's brother Morgan and they basically both became knights which at the time he didn't expect which would make sense like yo how did you know what I'm saying like it's like when you with your homies and shit y'all in the streets together and then all of a sudden you see a homie leveling up you're like damn you you really did it huh like I, I didn't expect that shit but yo mad props and I, I'd argue that maybe there was a little bit of not resentment but just kind of a certain feeling you would have there because Yami and his brother at the same time Morgan both joined the knights together meanwhile he was like you know that was in his stilo and at the same time he also had his certain feelings that we find out later on of how he felt being next to Morgan and then we find out at the age of 18 Noct was set to inherit the house of Forced. And I like that Tabata kind of switched things up because normally it's like, oh, the person that has the dark magic or is like, you know, a bad apple is usually the, you know, black sheep of the family. But it was the exact opposite in this family. Knocked the white haired guy that was kind of a delinquent and didn't care about things actually fit very well in his family and that's why they were like oh Morgan he's a goody two shoes and Morgan was actually the black sheep even though he was the good child you know the upstanding citizen joined the magic knights and things like that they didn't really care for him they cared about the brooding delinquent so to speak because the family was into dark magic and they studied devils for generations so it kind of worked well with Noct being that way which again it, it, it just showcases that this family was messed up and disturbed like again Gordon's family are on that path as well and Gordon's family who knows maybe they actually were linked i would love to see gordon and him together in the same scene knocked and gordon and see if like maybe they knew each other or something because it would make sense with both of them being you know just weirdos that were into dark shit and it also showed us the contrast right because they really wanted to demonstrate just the difference between these two brothers that were twins morgan and knocked while morgan was actually you know leveling up him and yami had became a dynamic duo of light and dark magic and the magic knights knocked just kept on getting further and further into his devil studies studying devils and 
and understanding magic that goes with devils and things like that. So he was going into the darker route and Morgan was going into a lighter route. So likewise with Yami, which would kind of mean like if you look at it again to give a comparison, Noct is basically like the homie that never made it. So he just kept getting further and further into the streets. And it's wild because as it stands right now, I forget exactly, was it four demons since we've met Noct that he had? But at a young age, basically, I want to say again, it was like around the age of 18 or something like that. He had already mastered and had the powers and contracts with four different devils which is insane because if you look at the dark triad each of them only have one maybe you could argue that yo they have some very powerful devils like lucifero is like one of the strongest out there and shit like that but yo him having four devils at a very young age was insane and just a side note i i don't know i just find it really interesting that basically from what it seems like yami actually picked up smoking from Noct because Noct you constantly seen him with a cigarette in his mouth and shit like that this little character trait that we've seen throughout the entirety of the story wasn't even explained from like Yami's past and Yami's perspective we get it from a different character altogether where the smoking got picked up from that was an interesting twist and I like the way again Tabata is explaining certain elements of like other characters using this character and his whole upbringing but they overplay their hand the house of Faust they decided yo um Noct might be ready for this higher level of devil to make a contract and i love the explanation of the underworld is ruled by three devils of space time and gravity and one of the devils who support them is lucifugus a supreme devil so for starters let's backtrack wait there's three devils of space time and gravity are those the three devils that are you know inhabiting the the bodies of the dark triad is that who they are like is lucifero the one of let's just say gravity and the one that vonica has is like space or time or things like that like is that where we're going with this whole thing that the dark triad already have the three strongest of the underworld and then i'm imagining because i said one of the devils who supports them is lucifugus a supreme devil so i'm imagining that that devil is underneath the three devils that control the underworld like he's a supreme devil but he wasn't quite at the level of those devils and i'm also imagining that he is somehow connected to lucifero lucifugus they kind of have a similar name maybe a brother or something of lucifer or the son of lucifer and right as they're doing the ritual morgan busts in on them and i'll be honest with you it kind of gave me a vibe and i know probably people are gonna be like whoa fanab you bugging out here this is the vibe i got though when morgan busted in on his family doing these things that they're not supposed to be doing you know this forbidden magic and things like that it kind of reminded me of itachi finding out about the uchiha and spying on them and knowing that they were up to no good and kind of calling them out on it him saying i can't stand by and and allow you guys to go through with this y'all yeah, breaking the rules and shit like that gave me vibes of again itachi finding out about his family now i'm not saying that obviously morgan you know very different character from itachi itachi just went and oh where i'm gonna just link with konohan they gotta die you know i gotta i gotta protect the village so very very different circumstances but never Nevertheless, it just gave me that same situation type of feel. And I was like, oh, Morgan, <laughs> I, I could imagine like being in that situation must have been heart wrenching as hell. And that line that it was several, several chapters ago, Nock said he hates the word, the phrase, I'm going to surpass my limits. And again, it made you wonder like, oh, this guy is just an asshole and everything. Getting the backstory on that as well, because as they're trying to summon Lucifugus, I, I want to say that's who they were going for. Nock says that he says, I'm going to surpass my limits limits which we find out with the heartbreaking events shortly after that's why he's bitter that's why he hated that phrase for so long because we see the giant devil that is shadowed out and man tabata just creepy vibe i'm gonna lie not showcasing the face or anything made it feel even creepier and all the devil says is summon and everybody around knocked and morgan just start dying one after another he starts attacking all of them and he's like yo this is one that we shouldn't have messed with. We should have never dabbled with this guy because a Supreme Devil, whole different ball game, fam. Whole different ball game. For him to say summon, it's like, yo, I ain't your servant, fam. Y'all brought y'all thought y'all brought me here for some bullshit. I'ma show you. And then we get the scene where Morgan starts trying to take off the bracelet because it was a bracelet that was able to summon this devil, this demon, and it leads to a very, very tragic moment, which, yo, Tabata been, he been on it. Like, between Asta's mom and the whole leave situation, and then now this, like, yo, these deaths, they're, they're impactful. They're very impactful. And seeing Morgan's death after basically stopping that devil that just killed damn near everybody, so he saved Nock, but in turn, he died there. Chavata, why fam? Why? And getting the last little 
pieces of what Morgan thought and had to say of how he knew his family was up to no good and forbidden magic, but he didn't report them. And he feels like, well, this is what I get for not reporting them. Because think about it. If he would have, then he probably would have been sent on any Tachi-esque mission. Like, yo, your family's breaking the rules. They got to go. And seeing that his dream was to stand side by side with Noct, which is why he constantly brought up like, yo, Noct, you should join the Magic Knights. Oh, I'm not going to lie. Sad. Sad. I'm... I'm <laughs> I'm struggling to keep it together here. And seeing Nock's perspective, because it could have gone many different ways. Nock could have resent them for being a goody two-shoe. Nock could have so many different issues. But the fact that when he breaks down what he felt about his brother, that he loved him so much that he felt me standing next to him because I was such a scum and a delinquent and just a loser and evil and all this other shit, I would defile his beautiful light. So that's why he never wanted to like go to the Magic Knights or anything because he felt like this is my sacred brother and I'm just, I'm scum. So that was a tough one that was a tough one man Tabata really he slapped with this one he did and then when he's there begging God to save his brother there was one thing that I was a little unclear of who was saying the dialogue that followed him begging God please save my brother and it was something along the lines of you did whatever you wanted and now you want to count on God you idiot to save you like that's something that I was unclear of like was that knocked right now thinking back and saying that was that that devil at that particular point like the remnants of it saying that like who was it that said the those words that that was something that i was a little bit unclear of but man imagine on top of all that feeling that pain and then on top of that like hearing that or was it the devils of the highest order right now saying that to knock as well i don't know whoever said it uh, even if it's not saying it to himself you're dead wrong for that fam it, it's too soon we just got the flashback damn it and then knock says that till he dies he will never forgive himself because, I, I mean, to a certain degree, yeah, you're going to feel accountable for your brother's death because you and your family, I would argue it was more so the family that was pushing him to this. Like, yo, summon this devil, you're ready for it and shit like that. But he feels responsible for his brother's death and he can't forgive himself. However, he tells the devils of the highest order, before you hurt any other good people, I'll kill you. Never thought I'd say this again, but I'm about to surpass my limits. Man, that was a chapter. Man, that, that was something else. Because for starters, we get all the context of Noct, why? he's an asshole why he felt so many different ways of like you know going off the trail he was traumatized by this whole event clearly that's why he felt like if you were good from the beginning then you're the best type of person like his brother morgan his brother morgan was good from the beginning just thinking back when he would tell asta sometimes people that are good also you know take the l regardless so you know i don't want that to happen to you because he's seen what happened with his brother oh i'm getting goosebumps man no <laughs> tabata did it Th this was a great freaking chapter very very sad very tragic but also coming full circle for Knox character this is big character development for him to get to the point of saying never thought i'd say this but i'm gonna surpass my limits as much as he hated that phrase because of what it represented the bad things of his life the bad things that came about from him trying to do it last time he knows he needs to in order to stop these devils and continue and man tabata don't kill off Nox. you just made me really like this guy he just shot up the ranks in the black bulls and uh, as a character in black clover that i really like don't do it fam really curious what you guys think about this entire chapter what do you think about the backstory morgan's death did you in fact tear up cry for this chapter where do you think this is all gonna go you think Noct is going to die at the hands of these two devils and uh i hope we get more on that whole lucifugus situation and the these ranks and devils and shit like i feel like there's so much lore that tabata could play around with if he wanted to like let's get a little bit in depth with this shit it's really really interesting any overall thoughts and expectations for the black clover manga with chapter 287 and beyond wow this was a tragic one this was sad and I really rock with Noct a lot more than I ever have after this chapter. But that's all I have for this one. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. If you liked anything I had to say or enjoyed the video, drop me a like. I'd greatly appreciate it. And if you want more from me, make sure to subscribe. Follow me on Twitter, Instagram. Hit that bell to get all notifications. And if you want to follow any of my other social media, links are in the description below. I'm from the world. And as always, people, have an awesome day. And remember the golden rule. Anime and manga for life, boy. Have an awesome day. Peace in. And RIP Morgan. And shout outs to Noct. I am rooting for you, fam. Tabata, don't kill this man. He's been through enough already, damn it. Have an awesome one. <laughs>